Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to season four of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Venom Vlog. And as I promised in the last episode, I was going to try to touch on uh, Eddie Brock's story that was printed in Spider-Man magazine from the 90s. Um, and I have the, the first image up here. You'll see it with the writer and the artist on the book. Uh, basically, Spider-Man magazine was this cool little magazine series that was coming out in the 90s to kind of coincide with the animated series. And, you know, and they're, you know, just that was the timing of it. It was just around that time. But it would include these fun little stories in it that, uh, you know, that didn't go to the main books or weren't considered main continuity or anything. And I figured since we wrapped up the Eddie Brock week with on such a sour note, like I really didn't like those last few Eddie Brock stories like Finale and, and uh, what was it, Sign of the Boss and some of those other ones. Like I just wasn't really a big fan of them. And so I was like, let's end or at least continue that a little bit uh, and then, you know, but on a more positive note. So I might have one or two Eddie Brock stories we're going to talk about and then we'll get into like a one or two Mac Gargan Venom stories that I didn't mention before actually. One where he fights against Moon Knight when the Thunderbolts are sent after Moon Knight. I forgot and I skipped that story accidentally. Um, and then also I think I have another one where Mac Gargan goes to another planet and a story called Beyond uh, and so and where he kills Spider-Man. <laughs> so we'll talk about that. Uh, so those will come up. So I figure we'll lead back into Flash Thompson because that's who our main focus is this season in the comics. So we'll get back to Flash Thompson stuff here very soon and we'll pick up right where Spider uh, Spider Island left off. But we're going to start by doing this story and maybe like a Rune versus Venom I'll do next. So that's two Eddie Brock stories there. Then we'll do two Matt Gargan stories and then we'll get back into Flash Thompson. So we'll just kind of build our way back to him. Uh, and so this story, it's really fun. It takes place during like the holidays. It's Christmas in New York. It's snowing out and it's a very short and brief story. I don't have a lot to say about it. I'll have some of the images pop up on screen so you can kind of see some of the cool artwork. It's very awesome, very classic looking, um, you know, but with Venom, who's a modern villain at this time, having like more of a classic look too, uh, as far as like fitting in with old school Spider-Man uh, style and stuff. And basically it's Venom just shows up out of nowhere, attacks Peter Parker or Spider-Man and says he wants to kill him. But then as they're fighting, they see this school bus on an icy bridge and it's about to fall over and get, go off the bridge. So Venom goes and he stops fighting Spider-Man. He says, no, I can't let innocent people die. I can't let those children die. And then he jumps down, grabs the bus, tries to pull it back. He's having trouble doing it on his own. Spider-Man comes and helps him and together they save the bus and they save the children. And then of course, Venom at the end is not happy that Spider-Man was there. And he goes, well, I guess since you helped me save these kids, you proved to me at least today you're not a monster. So I'll let you off the hook today. And and uh, I'm going to go and uh, and look for more innocent people to save. And I'll stay out of your hair. You stay out of mine. He goes, but tomorrow, tomorrow's a new day, Spider-Man. And I'll, and I'll look for you tomorrow. And then, you know, Spider-Man's kind of like, oh, yay. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, you know, and then, you know, Venom swings off and Spider-Man is there and all the kids are like, yay, Spider-Man saved us. So it's very silly in a way. It's very fun. It's a very quaint story. But I thought it was one that captures the spirit of both those characters really well. Um, you know, Venom is on a, you know, he's on a rampage. He's on a vengeance. He wants to hurt Peter Parker and he just shows up right on his doorstep, smashes into his house, grabs him and they start fighting each other. And then he sees innocent people, including kids on a bus uh, who are in danger and he you know, goes, okay, forget the revenge right now. I got to go save those kids. I think that's very Eddie Brock, uh, you know, especially the version, like I, I would, can, we talked about this before on my show where it's like there's generations of Venom fans and generation one is kind of the people who were there at the beginning when Venom was an, uh, an enemy of Spider-Man and they only see him kind of as an enemy of Venom or as, as spider he's, they see Venom as the enemy of Spider-Man only. Uh, but for me, I kind of came in closer to the Generation 2, like, you know, Maximum Carnage into Lethal Protector era, where he's more of an anti-hero. He's, you know, he's like the best, you know, that Spider-Man has for an ally against someone like Carnage and stuff. And then into Lethal Protector, where he goes off on his own and becomes his own anti-hero in San Francisco. So to me, I would consider myself more of a G2 Venom fan. And, uh, and so because of that, I find this story very endearing and very faithful to Eddie Brock. Even though it's very quaint, it's not very deep or anything like that, it's just Eddie, you know choosing to go save kids, innocent people, 
instead of killing Spider-Man and then letting Spider-Man off the hook for 24 hours, <laughs> as he says. So uh, I just thought it was cool. I was like, you can fit it anywhere really into the early continuity and it kind of works, but it was a fun little magazine storyline. And I, you can actually pick this up in a, like a collection book uh, that I'll put the cover on the screen there. Uh, you can get that on Comixology and it pops up on sale from time to time. I think it's normally like 10 or 12 bucks if you get it digitally, um, but uh, I think it does show up on sale quite often. Anytime they do a Spider-Man sale, they typically have it on sale with it. So, uh, so you can probably get it for, you know, $2.99, $3.99, something as cheap as that, even if you just, you know, be patient with it. But it's cool. It's just a collection of all these old magazine stories. And I think they had a cover in there. It's like a, a spread with Spider-Man fighting Venom, but I, I don't know if that's from another a story that wasn't included in this collection i think there was also one where carnage was on the cover uh but i didn't see a story to follow it it was just the cover but there was no story in this graphic novel uh you know collection digital collection that had carnage in it so maybe there is in the print version that i don't know about um but at least in this one there wasn't there's was just the cover so i show those images there and uh and so you guys can see them so you, we can kind of conclude this you know and, and kind of wrap up spider-man magazine all in one episode so it looks like there might have been other appearances from venom and carnage but but without the print versions, I don't really know. Uh, but the digital one is available for sale. You can go check that out. And uh, and I'll try to put a link to that down below the description box. So let me know what you think of this little story. You know, does it sound fun to you? I mean, it is actually really cool. It's just like eight, nine pages, something like that, maybe 10 pages at, at the max. And, uh, and I think it captures the spirit of the relationship between Spider-Man and Venom really well, especially at that time period of their lives. And, uh, and yeah, it was just kind of fun to read something that simple, you know, after all the convolutedness of the Larry Hama Venom stuff, it was nice to just read something simple and go, ha, ah, okay. Yeah. All right. I, I just needed that breath of fresh air. I needed that reminder that, that someone out there has some kind of grasp on eddie as a character and i thought this story as simple as it was it delivered that pretty well uh, but let me know what you think have you read it if you haven't you know let me know your thoughts down below and as always we'll continue our conversation down there thanks for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll have more venom vlogs coming to you guys as soon as possible thanks so much see you in the future peace